Good day, brethren in the Lord, friends, and to those who are watching this video. A blessed day to you. It's the first Sunday of the month of June, and we thank God that up to this moment, the Lord our God keeps us from danger and sustained our lives. I hope that everyone is in the mood to worship the Lord, for it is fitting or right to offer a day for Him. I thank God for this opportunity that once again I can bring to you and share the things that I've learned from God's Word. We are now in chapter 3 in our study series of James. As we start, let me read to you verses 1 to 12 of this chapter. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with a greater strictness, for we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a small rudder, whatever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire, and the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a re restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. J Apostle James spends more time in discussing on how a man can't take full control of his or her tongue. I entitled our study for today, Small and Terrible. James reminded the Jewish believers on how a Christian ought to use his or her tongue. Verse 10 says, From the same mouth come blessing and cursing, my brothers. These things ought not to be so. Believers' lips must be sanctified and holy. The words that come out of our mouth must only be edifying to men and glorifying to God. That is why James commanded the believers to stop becoming a teacher or teacher. He said, not many of you should become teachers my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. What was happening here? This is what I imagined in their dispersion. During their persecution, they were scattered and were not able to gather in their conventional way for worship. There may be people who are eager to show their talents in teaching and knowledge of the scripture. I would like also to assume that there are people who practice their gift by teaching and admonishing the people of God. The only problem is these people are not called to be teachers 
of the word. William Burkett said, We may admonish, reprove, and warn, but it must not be in a lordly manner, which is reviling eh, rather than reproving. Someone may substitute the function of a teacher, but it doesn't make him or her a teacher. We are not forbidden to admonish or teach, but being a minister of God is a special calling. Why did he or why did James instruct the Jewish believers to stop becoming teachers? He said, teachers will be judged by a higher standard because we have assumed greater accountability and more condemnation if we teach incorrectly. Amplified Bible version says, Not many of you should become teachers serving in an official teaching capacity, my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> For you know, that we who are teachers will be judged by a higher standard. Apostle James commanded these believers to stop becoming a teacher for every one of us stumble in many ways. We fail, we sin, and make mistakes in many ways. And obviously, most of the time, we sinned because of the way we use our tongue, the ungovernable muscular organ of the body. James then proceeds by illustrating how powerful an untamable tongue can be. He said, if we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. The first illustration James used is the horse beats and ship rudder. The size of a horse beats is 100 times smaller than the horse. But this horse beat is able to maneuver the whole body of the horse where the driver wants it to go. Same with the ship rudder. It is but a small part of the ship, but it can shift its direction to where the captain wants to go. You know, today, the biggest cruise ship is the Symphony of the Seas. Meron itong 1,188 feet long. More or less, 13 basketball courts. Ganon kalaki itong barko na ito. And alam nyo ba kung gaano lang kaliit yung kanyang timon or rudder? Meron lamang itong 32 feet by 49 feet. That is according to my soon-to-be captain, Rihan Jo Gaetano. Yun yung kanyang pag-compute uh, nito. It is so small, the timon or the rudder. It is so small compared to the body of the ship. Sabi ni James, so also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. Tongue is just a small muscular organ of the body, but it is so powerful that it may have control over you if you are not careful and mindful. James said, How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire, and the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. The second illustration, illustration James used is the fire. You know, last June 2, when the fire broke out in our barangay, Barangay Addition Hills, Black, uh, Black 37 and 38, 
were consumed by fire and almost everything that they have was gone. I realize that James used fire to illustrate how destructive a fire can be. After the fire, the ashes, fragments, debris, or debris became the only trace of pain, painful experiences to the victims. We have a saying, Mabuti pang manakawan, wag lang masunugan. Alam natin lahat kung gaano ka-violent ang sunog. We all know how fierce fire is. Likewise, with our tongues, the words we speak will have positive or negative impacts on the lives of those we speak to. So be very careful with what you utter. Words that can ruin life are difficult to recover. Another illustration he used to describe how dangerous and powerful an untamable tongue is in verse 7. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. The beast, birds, serpents, and some kinds of fishes have brought under man's power and dominion. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Romans chapter 3 verse 13 said, Their words come from mouths that are like open graves. They use their lying tongues to deceive others. Their words are like the poison of snakes. Paul, one of the commentators said, The poison of the tongue is no less deadly. It murders men's reputations by the slanders it utters. Our tongue, by its, by its actual design, is basically used for talking, speaking, and communicating. However, especially in the numerous ad advancements in our world today, even communication no longer limit us to telephone or cell phone calls. We now have, or we now even have, video calls or Zoom meetings which connected people virtually. The world offers a wider platform for communication and for simply airing out what's on your mind in Facebook or even posting anything. The freedom of speech or talking is now very accessible to anyone. Anyone can post anything on social media, whether it's about our reaction on current situations or our two cents on political issues. The internet became a very huge conference hall of good and bad talks. The saddest part, as far as I observed, is even relationships are being tested because of what we try to ear out through our posts. Look, we may not literally utter words or verbalize our opinions, but the moment we speak our mind, regardless of what mood or of communication you used, we are more responsible of the words that come out from our hearts. We have a broader scope now wherein we can express our words and thoughts. Thus, I continually exhort and lovingly remind everyone to be very careful in posting on Facebook or any social media platform. Our post says a lot about us, our character, values in life, what we believe, and our faith in the Lord. 
Always remember, brethren, we are Christ's representatives. I have mentioned in my previous lesson in uh, chapter 2 about controlling the tongue. That is why it is only through surrendering to the Lord and allowing the Holy Spirit to possess you that you may overcome the power of your tongue. A Christian who cannot control his or her tongue must check him or herself. If then Christ is the Savior in your life, Christ must also be the Lord of your life. Meaning, if you already surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, it includes surrendering your tongue. We use our tongues to praise our, our Lord and Father, but then we curse people who were created in God's likeness. Christians must live a life of consistency. Praising God and cursing the people is very contradicting in what we believe and claim to be. What is in the well of the heart will come up through the bucket of the mouth. And Jesus Christ said in Matthew and in Luke, he said, You broad of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. For out of, of, the, for out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. In the last two verses, James tells the idea of consistency. He said, does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives? Or a grapevine produces figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. It is impossible that both fresh and salty would come out in the same spring. Maybe you are so religious in your ways. You read the Bible, you pray publicly, and act like a perfect Christian. But you talk about people, judge others, curse, and lie. It does not make sense. Christians or Christian goals are to utter words that will edify others and glorify God. Let us therefore be consistent in our faith in the Lord. As I conclude, verse 10 says, Blessing and cursing come from the same mouth. My brothers and sisters, it just shouldn't be this way. It is my prayer, brethren in the Lord, friends, and the people who are watching this video, that we will be very careful and mindful of the words that we utter. May we continue to grow in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Stay at home, stay safe, and stay fit. God bless everyone. Good day.